there's this trend on like TikTok, I think, where it's like, tell me you're having a mental breakdown without telling you're having a mental breakdown. And I feel like this video is the embodiment of that. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm 18. I read way too much YA. And I read 658 books in the year of 2020. And this is my wrap up of that. So for clarity, because normally, you know, that raises questions. Um, I started like counting and reading and reviewing everything in March, but I can't remember if I put anything in. I don't think I did because I have reviews and ratings for these. So I don't think anything's technically from before March. This is more like March to December. That being said, I'm probably not going to read the same amount this year, even though I have like those three extra months, uh, because unless the globe shuts down again, which are, you know, we're hoping does not happen. Um, in this video, I'm obviously not going to be talking about all 658 books because that's insane and would take hours. So what we're going to do instead is in this video, I'm going to be talking about like just genre based statistics about what I read and stuff like that. And then I'm going to be literally just listing off the top few books in every genre. Obviously the genres where I read like 200 books, I'll be giving more of my top books in the genres where I read like five books. Uh, and then next week, I'm going to be talking about the 50 best books I read and only giving myself, hopefully, I'm going to set like timers. So I only have 30 seconds to talk about all of them. Because if you watched any of my other videos, I ramble way too much, but I know I can't do that in a video with 50 books in it. And then the week after that, I'm going to do either the bottom 30 or bottom 20, just because I know I'm going to talk longer about negative books. Because you can say a book's great in a few words. You can't really say a book's bad in a few words. You know, you feel me? Okay, let's get into it. Also, I know I look kind of insane. Um, I don't know how to care for short hair. <laughs> so if you do, please help me. My hair is naturally straight. I don't know what happened, but I need to film the video anyways. <laughs> First off, let's talk about page counts and stuff. I thought I'd have to read this number off my computer, but the total page count is actually really easy to remember because it's 222,880 um, pages, which might be slightly wrong, partially due to the fact that I did read a handful, I think like under 20, but definitely over 10 of audiobooks this year, which I did just put the page counts down for, even though I wasn't reading physical pages. The number's also probably slightly off because I read a lot of ARCs this year, and sometimes the ARCs I read were not get on Goodreads, or if they were, they didn't have a page count associated. So for those, I put the average, because all my stuff's in a spreadsheet, of the page counts that I'd read so far. So that number might not be 100% accurate, but it's the closest to accurate I could get. That means that per day, I would have been reading assuming I didn't account for not the stuff before March, like it's all the year. So if I was reading every day this year, starting in January, ending in December, that would have been 608.9 pages a day. On screen right now, I'm going to put a graph. This is a graph of the average rating that I gave every genre I read. Um, I get the genres by looking at the first genre tag on Goodreads, ignoring tags that say like middle grade YA, that kind of thing. And also I do ignore the tags romance and the tag LGBT, just because I found that with straight romance books, they're shelved as romance then contemporary but for some reason with lgbt they tend to be shelved as lgbt then contemporary then romance i don't know why but it would mess up my graphs so romance things that are contemporary went into contemporary lgbt romance things that are contemporary also went into contemporary if it was lgbt and it wasn't contemporary it went into the right genre oh i didn't even say my numbers might look a little weird because i read out of 17 there are not 17 criteria points i just chose a random number back in march when i started reading books and now i'm stuck with it but they should all line up because like i said i do have like a legitimate list that i slot everything into so the numbers correlate with each other other, but not to any real rating system. So I gave an average overall rating of 9.9. .9. That means that everything except for contemporary and fantasy, which are the two genres we're gonna find out I read the most of, so uh-oh, that's not good. Um, and paranormal and science fiction were below my average. Paranormal was significantly below my average. It was a 6.5, which everything else is kind of within like the 9 to 11 range. So yeah, I don't like paranormal books, which I do know about myself, but I keep reading them anyways. Um, um, it tends to be, I do like ghost stories, but those tend to go into like horror, that type of thing, horror, mystery, thriller, that category. I do not like paranormal romance just because it's, <laughs> just because like it's not my jam, no shade if you like paranormal romance, but I read a lot of those this year and that's why that is so low. Everything else is then above my average with the exception of, I'm looking at the chart off screen because I didn't memorize all this. 
Um, mystery thriller, which also got a 9.9, so it's right on the average. Um, and the highest rated thing was poetry and verse, which made me really happy because I normally say it's my favorite genre, so it's always fun when I find out that I wasn't wrong about that because the last few months, I either, last month I didn't read any, and the two months before that, I think it was one of my lowest rated genres, which was making me worried that I'd have to choose a new favorite genre. On screen right now, we have a new chart. This is a visual representation of the percent I read in every genre this year. Uh, so the genre I read most of was contemporary, where I read 192 books followed closely by fantasy where I read 188. I don't think that really comes down to like we saw in the ratings. Fantasy and contemporary are not my favorite genres, they just happen to be where most things are published. And while I love reading inverse books, you can't get by only reading inverse books because there's not a lot, especially in YA, which is where I like to read the most. But I also think I don't dislike contemporary fantasy, it's just that since I've read so much, it's so easy for me to read something that is good, but just find it mediocre and give it a slightly lower rating, you know? And also, like, the things that do manage to rise above the odds and get higher ratings get bogged down by the things that are just, like, bad and problematic and we don't like. Um, the thing I read the least of were anthologies, and I don't think I read an anthology before this year, so I'm still counting that as a win. I only read five anthologies this year. Notably, I also only read... 13 nonfiction books, which again, nonfiction is not a genre I read a lot before this year, and I started getting into it. A lot of the nonfiction books I read were because now that I'm on that galley, they keep like in the last month, there were so many like queer help guides published, especially on how to come out, and I am already out, so I don't know why I read them all, but I read them all because I was intrigued. So a lot of them were like queer self-help, a weird amount of those were, but I don't think my top one was, which is the one we're gonna talk about in a bit. And then I know you don't know my reading taste because this is the first year I'm doing this, but what I'm proud of is the fact that I read 34 graphic novels because graphic novels were never something I really read a lot of, especially because I've just, since I was like a kid, reading has been a thing that like defined me and when you're a kid and you read a lot people think that it means you're really really smart and for some reason I remember like in sixth grade I was so into Big Nate but I would not bring Big Nate any like I'd get them at the library I'd read them at the library and leave I didn't want anyone to know I was reading graphic novels for some reason so I'm very glad like I've grown out of that toxic phase and I'm now enjoying a lot of graphic novels if you have any suggestions for graphic novels specifically please let me know because I want to read more okay now we're going to get into lists so I'm thinking with these lists I'm probably not going to talk really about why I like the books so much because a lot of them are going to show up, if not all of them, I think maybe all of them, are going to show up in my video next week and I want to try to keep this one short just because I know the one for next week is going to be like between 30 minutes and an hour, probably closer to an hour because I'm probably not going to stick to my trying to do everything in 30 seconds thing. This is more meant to be like an introduction to those two next videos so I don't have to waste even more time explaining what the hell is going on. So for the genres where I read around 200 books in, I'll be giving my top 10, so that's contemporary and fantasy, and I'll give my top 5 for the ones I read about 50, so that's like my top 10% of those for, that would be mystery thrillers and science fiction. I'll be giving my top 3 for historical fiction, graphic novels, and dystopia. Oh, and Poetry in Verse. I forgot about Poetry in Verse, that too. And then my top two, Paranormal, and then my best nonfiction, my best anthology, because like we said, I didn't read a lot of nonfiction or anthologies. I changed my mind. I said I'm not going to say anything about these, but I will mention if these are... What should I mention? I will mention if these are written by black authors. I know that's something a lot of people like at the end of this year and throughout this year have been looking for more books by black authors. You don't wait for my next video to know if they're by black authors or like focused around Black Lives Matter and those kinds of themes. And also queer books, just because I recommend a lot of queer books on this page. So I feel like a lot of people are queer and I like making it more accessible to find more queer books. Cool, so let's get into it. So let's talk about my top 10 contemporary reads. The 10th best book I read was on The Come Up, which is by Angie Thomas, who is also the author of of whatever it's called, The Hate You Give. So Black Lives Matter, that kind of thing. If you're looking for books by black authors, read that one. Um, the ninth best book I read was Painting Saints of Nothing. The eighth best book I read was The Cost of Knowing, which is by the author, I'm forgetting her name. Oh, she's so wonderful. The woman who wrote Slay. Um, Jeez, I'll put, I'll put the book on screen so you know her name. It's about black issues, specifically young black men. The seventh best book I read was Queer. I was not expecting all these to be black or queer. Um, maybe I shouldn't be describing all them, but anyways, let's keep going. Hi, it's me. I'm editing. This is why I should definitely use scripts in my video because I got off topic and didn't even say what the seventh best contemporary book I read actually was. Um, it was I Wish You All the Best, which as I said, is queer. The sixth best book I read was Heart Sister. The fifth best contemporary book I read was This Is My America, which is about black rights specifically in America. The fourth best book I read was Date Me Bryson Keller, which is both queer and by a black author with 
I is the protagonist. Yeah, the protagonist is black. His love interest is not. The third best book I read was Aftershocks. The second best book I read was We Are Okay, which is queer. And the best book I read was Felix Ever After, which is both queer and by a black author. Okay, now moving into fantasy. The 10th best fantasy book I read was Sisters of the Perilous Heart. The ninth was Girls of Shadow and Storm, which is the sequel to Girls of Paper and Fire, which is queer. The eighth was Two Dark Reigns, which is technically queer. The first few books in the series are not, but I think by Two Dark Reigns, the queer characters are revealed to be queer. She's bi, but they don't mention it until further into the series. I don't really know what to say about that one. The seventh best book I read was Nevernight, which, as with Two Dark Reigns, I can't remember if the protagonist is revealed to be. She likes multiple genders, but her love interest in the first book is a guy, and I don't know if it mentions the fact that she's queer in that one, from what I can remember, but it is a queer series. The sixth best book I read was The Gilded Wolves, which has queer characters as an anthology cast. The fifth best book I read was Legendborn, which is by a black author and about black issues. The fourth best book I read was The Silvered Serpents, which is the sequel to The Gilded Wolves, so it also has queer characters. The third best book I read was Evercursed. The second best book I read was Cemetery Boys, which is queer. And the first best book I read was The House in the Cerulean Sea, which is also queer. <laughs> Moving into mystery thrillers, we're just gonna talk about the top five here because I read less books in this genre. The fifth best mystery thriller book I read was Burn Our Bodies Down, which is by Rory Powers, who wrote um, Wilder Girls. This book I don't think has any canonically queer characters, but because I had read Wilder Girls right before I read some of them as queer, I don't think it's queer though. Um, the fourth best book I read was The Initial Insult, which again I read characters as queer, but I don't think it's queer. Um, I just, if there's two girls who are close, my brain's gonna feel like they're in love. Okay, leave me alone. The third best book I read was The Good Girl's Guide to Murder. The second best book I read was Teen Killers Club, which has a queer character in it, but it's not the protagonist. Um, and I don't know, I don't know, I could see queer people getting offended on it, I didn't. And the first best book I read in Mystery Thriller, was The Thing She's Seen, which is by Australian Indigenous authors. If you're looking for BIPOC authors, there you go. Okay, the top five. I want to say now, because I didn't realize how many of these were queer or by Black authors. I just read a lot of queer books because I, you know, like, we, we like relatable experiences. Um, and it's not like, I don't give books higher ratings because they're queer or because they have Black authors. They're just genuinely very, the best written books I read. I didn't only read books by queer authors and um, B.I. P.O.C. authors this year, but they just happen to be good. I swear I didn't know that I'd be having to say that about all of them as we go through these lists. Okay, let's talk about the top five science fiction books I read this year. The fifth best book I read was This How You Lose a Time War, which is queer. The fourth best book I read was Ignite the Stars, which is not queer, but god should it have been. I talked about it in my last video, actually. There is no chemistry with- I'll talk about it when I actually talk about that book next week. I'm cutting myself off here. Um, the third best book I read was the original. The second best book I read was Sky Hunter, which again, queer side characters, not a queer protagonist. And the best sci-fi book I read was Nowhere on Earth. The next few are just going to be talking about the top three because I read less books in these genres and I just want to give you all the best of the best. So the third best historical fiction book I read was The Black Kids, which is by a black author about black issues. The second best book I read was The Invincible Summer of Juniper Jones, which is by a black author about black issues. And the best book I read was The Memory of Things. Moving into graphic novels, these are all queer. I'm not gonna pause after everyone to say they're queer, they are all queer. Cool, because those are that's what I mean when I say I need graphic novel racks, because I started reading graphic novels and they were queer, so it just led me to more queer graphic novels. So please give me more graphic novel racks, because I feel like I'm in this really weird subset of graphic novels. I don't, did I read a single straight graphic novel? Oh, I don't think I did. Anyways, um, the third best graphic novel I read was Heartstoppers Volume 2, which is better than Volume 1. I have not read Volume 3 yet. The second best graphic novel I read was Nimona, and the first best graphic novel I read was The Prince and the Dressmaker. Okay, moving into dystopia. The third best dystopian book I read was The Troll, which is by a black author, is not about black issues. The second best book I read was The Giver, and the first best dystopian book I read was Scythe. The Troll is the sequel to Scythe. Okay, moving into poetry and verse. The third best poetry and verse book I read was Aphrodite Made Me Do It, which is kind of queer. It's poems, but some of them have like intersectionality and stuff. The second best book I read was The Poet X, which is by Elizabeth Acevedo, who is wonderful. We love her, read everything by her, who is black. And also one of the main side characters is queer. She writes a queer character in all of her books, but it tends not to be the protagonist, and it's not the protagonist in this one. Um, and the first best book I read was Black Flamingo, which is by a black author who is queer. It's own voice, and the story is about being black and queer. 
For Paranormal, I'm just going to give the top two books I read because I did not read a lot of Paranormal, and as we discussed, I did not like a lot of Paranormal. The second book I read was Soulbound, the first was Ghost Boys, which is by a Black author. We've already got to nonfiction and anthology, which makes me very proud because I didn't talk as much as I thought I would. Um, so, for these, I'm just going to give my best books. My best nonfiction read this year was Out, How to Be Your Authentic Self, which, as I said, I read so many coming out self-help books for some reason this year. But this was the best one by far and the healthiest one by far. So if you're looking for that kind of thing, oh my god, check this out. Um, and the best anthology book I read was Minority Report and Other Short Stories by the author of Minority Report, whose name I forget, but he's super famous. And it's probably on the book that I put on the side of the screen. Well, we did it! We got to the end of the video. How many books did you read this year? Did you read anything in any of my lists? Do you plan on doing it? Because when people tell me they're planning on reading books I read, like, I get so excited about them. Based on my lists, I'm really curious actually. Does anyone have any recommendations for me? Because I would love that. Um, I'd love to hear anything and everything from you in the comments. I'm asking a lot of questions because I'm lonely and sad and want to talk to people, please. Uh, and until then, I will see you next Tuesday-ish. Bye!